Hey, Dan and Amy, we talked about it yesterday. Mitch McConnell proposing the notion that he could be supportive of a provision that would allow states to file for bankruptcy. He could not support uh, direct uh, unencumbered aid to the states, uh, blank check block grants to the states for to bail out uh, unfunded pension obligations, for right. example, that uh, were mainly piled up prior to the pandemic. So we heard from uh, uh, Pritzker and Lightfoot yesterday. We also heard from Andrew Cuomo in New York on the idea. Senator Mitch McConnell goes out and he says uh, maybe the states should declare bankruptcy. Okay? This is one of the really dumb ideas of all time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I said to my colleagues in Washington, I would have insisted that state and local funding was in this current bill because I don't believe they want to fund state and local governments. And not to fund state and local governments is incredibly short-sighted. They want to fund small business, fund the airlines. I understand that. But state and local government funds police and fire and teachers and schools. How do you not fund police and fire and teachers and schools in the midst of this crisis? Such, well, you should have had a surplus to fall back on. I don't know. That sounds like your problem, doesn't it? Such sophistry. I know. Uh, and then, uh, hold, hold on. Okay. Uh, such sophistry with respect to Andrew Cuomo. Police and fire and teachers. That's always the fallback position of the blank check politician. Uh, there are all sorts of things the state government does in places like New York and Illinois and New Jersey that it is out over its skis, that it doesn't do well and doesn't do well at exorbitant prices. And is and all of these governments as well, it's worth noting, have not made any mention of any willingness to look at headcount, right. to look at salary Just levels, that. to yeah. look at pension benefits, to talk even about furloughs. They no, live they in a do. fantasy world where there are no consequences and they are completely insulated from what happens in the rest of the world, the private sector world. And then they moralize about funding police, fire, firefighters and teachers as a cover for their profligacy. Not going to work. And good on Republicans for resisting exactly what Andrew Cuomo wanted them to do. And for exactly the reason that Andrew Cuomo wanted them to do it, you know, we're not interested in bailing you out of problems that you brought to the table at, at the at the outset of this viral outbreak. And J.B. Pritzker, here's or Governor Pritzker, excuse me, his response to my similar question. So I would like to say that um, Amy clearly doesn't understand what happens when an organization goes through a bankruptcy and out the other side. Uh, the cost of borrowing, the cost of doing business uh, goes way up. Um, the much beyond where uh, we are now, we would be paying interest at usurious rates. Uh, our state would be in a world of hurt. People wouldn't want to do business, in fact, with a state that's gone through bankruptcy with the idea that, well, if you've gone through it once, you might go through it again. Uh, and the fact is, states are not allowed to uh, declare bankruptcy, and it's a good thing. Uh, what we do need to do is make sure that we do, as I was doing before we got to this crisis, which is to balance our budget on a regular basis, to begin to build surpluses so that we can pay down existing bills that were there before I came into office, to make sure that we're continuing the services that people yeah, need in the state while also being fiscally responsible. Yeah, I mean, despite possible mess. bankruptcy, I, I mean, residents and businesses are fleeing anyway, and we're out paying a high interest rate with 12% APR on $6 billion in unpaid bills. And then he talks about a surplus. What revenue is coming in right now, especially be after being hit with this COVID pandemic? I know guys that were in YPO with J.B. Pritzker. Yeah. They knew he was an empty suit, a trust fund baby, and he is nothing more than that. In point of fact, you know, this guy who was born with $2 billion in an account, oh he, he's, a, he's a joke. The, the business experience. He, she doesn't, you know, you Amy, don't, you don't know. down to me like, yeah. Amy, you don't know what it's like to go through bankruptcy and then emerge out the other side.
do you, Mr. Businessman, pretend businessman? It, that's a lie, first of all. Uh, bankruptcy is a clarifying event. It's a reorganization of your obligations. Uh, you, there's a lot of success stories of bankruptcy. Oh, by the way, note a recent one in the public sector because there's not a lot to point to. The Prior to the outbreak, the sort of resurgence of Detroit, now it's not going up at a 45-degree angle, but the resurgence of Detroit coming out of their bankruptcy a half a dozen years ago. Getting out from obligations that are uh, in, uh, eliminating your ability to do anything other than to try to you know, pay down those obligations. In other words, bail out the Titanic with a teaspoon, which is what we're talking about with respect to Illinois' pension system. Uh, Harley Davidson went into bankruptcy and then emerged out the other side, didn't they? Paid back the, the public uh, taxpayer oh, the loan, uh, the, the, the taxpayer loans they got. There's a number of businesses who've declared bankruptcy uh, of course, and have come back. Of course. So don't tell me I don't know. And with respect to, oh, well, you can't do that because it's a constitutional issue, um, that is very much uh, a subject of debate. The Congress provided for municipal bankruptcies in the 30s, 1937, I believe, to be exact. Uh, and uh, a lot of uh, constitutional scholars and something less than a constitutional scholar like me would argue that uh, the same logic behind municipal bankruptcies could apply to the states. Even though the states are sovereign, uh, the Supreme Court affirmed that congressional action in a 1938 case. States are sovereign, but they also, and this is the point, it would be voluntary. It's to provide a provision in the bankruptcy code. You can choose to access it or not, or you can choose to go your own way, J.B., and figure and this out on your own. Well, so go the ahead. Feds so, in so, and go, over the state. so go ahead and do it, but don't tell me that there's no way to do it, that just dismiss it out of hand. Uh, there's statutory precedent that's relevant. There's Supreme Court case law that's relevant. There's a 11th Amendment provision that states can waive their sovereignty if they wanted to access something like this, arguably. If you were interested in thoughtfully considering it, you would know these things and you'd be willing to address them. He doesn't know them. He's not willing to address them. He just waves it off because the real deal here is I'm not willing to upset my public sector union financiers and foot soldiers. That is all this is about. And the yep. same goes for Cuomo and Phil Murphy in New Jersey and, and, and Brashear in Kentucky, sure, yeah. for that matter. It, that's the real deal here. I know. And just like smoke and mirrors. And if we declare bankruptcy, no one's going to want to do business here. Really? People are leaving because they don't want to do business here. It's a state. It's a it's a government centric view of the world. And it's the same thing with Cuomo. You know, we start with government. Government is the animating force. It's the innovative force. It's the productive enterprise in a free society. No, it's not. It doesn't even exist without the productive enterprises in a free society. This whole bailout the states and cities has it exactly backwards, unsurprisingly. But it's not being challenged enough, including by Republicans. The illogic of it all. Speaking of illogic and Republicans, one Republican, one Republican. <laughs> State Representative Darren Bailey from well, this is one of those fun towns in Illinois that is pronounced differently here than elsewhere. He is from Louisville, Illinois. Right. Not Louisville, but it's Louisville. Spelled the same, but it's mm -hmm. Louisville, Illinois, down in Clay County in southern Illinois uh, in this little state called Illinois that exists outside of Chicago. And uh, he's a state representative. He has uh, filed suit against the governor with respect to the extension of this uh, shelter-in-place order. And State Representative Bailey joins us now. Darren, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Hey, good morning, Dan and Amy. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Amy, I sure appreciate your, uh, finally, some logical, hard-hitting questions that started rising over the past week in the uh, – and the governor's uh, press conferences, so I was it was a breath of fresh air to uh, hear those. Thank you. Well, you know, I'm trying to get in every day, but they physically won't let me in, but I have to I rely on my former coworkers to ask questions for me, so there's no follow-up. I understand. Uh, well, very you got frustrating. Good while it uh, so, uh, Darren, tell us about uh, this uh, injunctive relief that you seek on behalf of uh, 13 million Illinoisans. Well, thank you. And that's just, you know, you, you, you know me, Dan. You, you got to know me early on when all this has started, and, and you helped uh, with the process, and you know my heart. 
a, you know, and ultimately it's for my nine grandkids and my four children and the farm and everyone else after that that, uh, you know, w- w- who live and work and thrive in Illinois. And, and I'm just, I'm so frustrated at government, not like I thought that I wasn't going to be, but just in my first year of service as a state representative. And, and as you just mentioned, you see, you see nothing productive coming out of this. It's like government is the solution. Government is not the solution. The hardworking families, the businesses of Illinois, uh, that's what that's what makes this country so great. So so yeah, um, you know I, I'm still I listen. and I get calls every day with the vast numbers, vast numbers of people in our district down here that still after five weeks of this have still not been able to get through to file an unemployment claim. I mean there are some families and businesses who are becoming literally destitute, and there's there's simply no answer, you know. And and now if you're a sole proprietorship, uh, uh, you, you know you're not going to be able to get any relief you're not going to be able to file any relief until the middle of may so so you hear all this stuff and the, and the, and and we bought into this we you know we have this health pandemic and, and, and it, it's something we don't understand and time goes on and the governor issues an order on march 9th you know for for an emergency proclamation and it's like kind of, okay we we've got to we got to we got to learn from this and we got to do this and then and then we keep seeing these order extensions coming and after a while you know we we, we knew there's this 30 day provision you know this emergency Management uh, Agency Act that w- that was you know took place you know for for a reason like this in case of emergency to give a governor uh, the ability for 30 days to kind of get things back in order and under control so so you know governance the three branches of governance governance in this great country can begin to function again and uh, and that's what's uh, that's what's being kind of left out here unfortunately in that time frame you would have thought that the General Assembly would have had some kind of conversation some kind of call to action. That didn't take place, and uh, much as your conversation that preceded uh, our interview right now entailed, um, you know, this this country's being destroyed, and it's being destroyed, uh, you know, financially through our businesses, and we can't do this anymore. So, well, it's time many for, cases you know, do you the, have in Clay County, and how many do you have any deaths, and how many people are hospitalized? What are your numbers? Uh, throughout our district, uh, there are very few, if any, people hospitalized. Three, uh, three of the major big hospitals have no one hospitalized. Here in Clay County, there were uh, two cases. There are no deaths. Um, and um, with that being said, there, one of the cases, you know, are, uh, have, been, have been healed. And uh, we do have, we had a nursing home in one of the local counties that recently, um, uh, it was an interesting scenario. Uh, you know, an EMT worker uh, you, you know, brought this case in as they were coming in and, and, and doing what they needed to do, and that was later discovered. But there is uh, there are some cases that have they're isolated uh, to a uh, to a nursing home in a local county. And other than that, it's been you know it's been very very quiet. Our hospitals are going broke. I mean, for when I when I call into the hospital administrators, the health department directors, the mayors, the county board chairs, I mean it's. It's, uh, it's kind of a dire situation that we have to do something because this uh, we understand the social distancing. We understand the wearing the gloves, the masks, and the sanitizing. We can do that. But, I mean, he, you know, the governor issued an order for uh, people to wear masks. Uh, where are you going to buy masks at? Because there are none out there for sale anywhere. You can't even find hand sanitizer or Lysol on the shelves. So so we do have, a, we do have an interesting uh, scenario with some of these uh, – um, orders that were, were uh, issued, but it's it's time for the government to function as the government, and uh, and and the other uh, branches, you know, need to, um, you know, need to be involved, and that's what my, that's what my suit challenges. That uh, so so, you know, so one person. Yeah. So so on the, so just on a couple of things on the caseload. This Illinois Department of Public Health website: six counties have yet to have a single case of COVID nineteen in Illinois. Of the 102 counties in the state, 60 of them have less than 20 cases. Of those 60 counties, 45 have less than 10 cases. Um, and so, again, the, the uh, question that was asked actually earlier in the week by Amy about uh, a regional approach, and he seemed open-minded to that. Um, uh, other mayors from outside Chicago have spoken up about uh, providing some relief outside of Chicago. Chicago can be handled differently, or any place that would have a significant outbreak can be handled differently. But what 60 counties have less than 20 cases, 45 have less than 10 Six have none. Um, I, I, the idea that those counties can't go the way of Georgia or Oklahoma uh, is just absurd. I mean, there's just no scientific basis for it for all the people peddling their uh, scientific expertise or their reliance on scientific expertise. Yeah, so I, and that's exactly right. And I screamed that from day one, you know, way back whenever even the uh, 
the uh, minimum wage bill was introduced. I mean, we can't, we can't, uh, business down here just simply will not sustain that. And, and I asked for regionalization. I've been asking that the whole time I was at all of last year. And I was able to talk to the governor on Saturday morning, and I, that was my main plea. Please uh, regionalize this thing and make things look different in different areas of the state. And uh, talked to the lieutenant governor yesterday, so I appreciate them reaching out to listen. And, and I, you know, I never, never wanted, desired, thought about, uh, you know, suing anyone, and never did that in my life. But I've had several friends suggest that over the past few weeks, so that seed was, was kind of sat there. And and then we kind of put this together quickly. And um, you know, and I waited till the press conference yesterday to listen to that to see what. Uh, and, and that really was one of the key words I was listening for was was regionalization. I'd heard that before, but I did, but absolutely no idea, yeah. no no interest. And and when I when I when the press conference went and the whole uh, another thirty day stay at home order, it was just uh, too much for uh, well. It, one it, of the and, 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 and here, here's the thing on that. Here's the thing on that because you know regionalism, but. What your what your injunct, injunction seeks would be uh, a benefit to the entire state because what you're suggesting uh, per statute, and we've talked about the statutory language on this show, uh, with respect to the Illinois Emergency Management Act, it says upon such pro- the statute upon such proclamation, the governor shall have and may exercise for a period not to exceed 30 days the following emergency powers, and then it mm-hmm. lists them. 30 days. Well, we're well beyond 30 days. He's extending them unilaterally. It would seem that it would require a legislative approval, a, a consultation, if not approval. And that seems to me the gist of your claim against this order that, and the injustice of it, the injustice of it. And it is. We're, we as Americans, we're smart. We can figure this out. And, uh, and, we're, and we're actually doing that. You know, I understand in your area with the population situation, you may need to do things differently. I get that. So exactly, it's uh, this, this is an overreach of government, and it needs to be checked. And uh, this is uh, this is the way to do it when no one else would step up and do anything. So, and don't you miss going to church and going to school with the kids and restaurants? I mean, you know. Well, I do. We, you know, I, I got. I have to admit that uh, I have enjoyed uh, actually the the church situation. This whole uh, Facebook. Uh, I think it's beginning to reach more people than even we understood. I, you know, I, I do, but I can, you know, we've been willing. Everybody down here has, has cooperated. Uh, we're, we've been willing. We, we can buy into this, but but after a time, uh, we learn how to adapt. And you know, when Dr. Fauci said yesterday morning that this could arise again this fall, are we going to shut down again uh, this time next year when a, when a different type of virus that we have no idea pops up? Do we just turn the key off and shut government down? Uh, we we can't. We There's too many. Um, what well, one right. of the one of the things this is going to do? It's going to provide, I assume, uh, a lot of energy behind your colleague, State Representative Brad Hallbrook's move uh, for secession. Yes, that's that's always been so. That, so that's yeah, yeah. That's uh, you know, I uh, that's on the table, and that's always a talking point. I prefer that uh, we uh, work together as one Illinois, but uh, you know, right. it's just. Uh, it's, it's becoming increasingly difficult. So, so that that uh, that's yeah. awesome that, that there is an option on the table. That's exactly right. There's a good line that uh, Peggy Noonan repurposed from uh, uh, from somebody who on Twitter that uh, we may all be in the same storm, but we're not on the same boat. And uh, that, yeah, that's 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 that, that policymakers don't seem to make those important distinctions, those nuances. And so they try to cover it with, you know, one Illinois all in this together, hashtag campaigns and and merchandising. And you know what? It's just uh, it's uh, it's bad public policy making is what yeah. it is. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. So, you know, people down here, sometimes uh, someone on the other side of the aisle from, from my area will just, you know, rail against me. Why aren't you working or trying to work together? And, and it, the, the interesting thing is I've developed some amazing relationships with Chicago uh, legislators. I really, really have. I can have a peaceful conversation with the governor, but at the end of the day, when you're not being heard and you come away with the conversation of someone shaking their head, yeah, we'll, we'll think about that. But then, you know, as I witnessed in the, in the legislature last uh, during last session, uh, you know, within the week, all of a sudden, uh, you know, a bill just completely contra- controversial to what you thought you had an agreement on just flies through the house and, and on party line rules that something's wrong. So, uh, and, and that's what that's what frustrates the people of Illinois. It's just uh, there 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 is no working together in Illinois. There isn't. You, we can work together on separate and individual bills. That takes place when the big picture comes along. As far as this, so what I freely call a socialistic agenda and idea, 
um, we get steamrolled. And, and think, I'm very, very concerned of what this future holds for us. Uh, do you think, uh, uh, would you support and do you think uh, Republicans in the state should support the uh, overture that Mitch McConnell made, which is to allow states to file for bankruptcy? Yeah. I don't know what the answer is. I, I honestly, to answer that, so that's kind of a, a foreign and interesting idea. Uh, seems like a, a free ticket to uh, you know. We saw what the Democrat uh, uh, senator senators did when they requested the forty one billion dollar bailout and and ten billion of that. I, I don't know. Uh, bankruptcy is a, kind of like filing a lawsuit to me. It's kind of a foreign idea, and uh, and I've been mulling that. I'm looking that over, and that doesn't seem a uh, I, I just don't see how the big picture works. Somebody's got to pay for something uh, any, way it, any way it goes. And, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, people need held responsible, you know, for getting us in the shape that we're in. And, and that's uh, – so, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't that's, answer that. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, he is the essential Darren Bailey, not just because he's a state representative standing up to Governor Pritzker's executive order through a complaint filed in district court – uh, to enjoin that order, but also because he's a farmer. Uh, he's an actual human being outside of being a yes. state representative. It's a rarity. Uh, Darren Bailey, state rep from the 109th District in Louisville, Illinois. Darren, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for this opportunity. God bless you. Yep, and good luck. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer. We'll talk about uh, the data on cases and deaths with Dr. John Lee, retired professor of pathology and NHS consultant pathologist at 636. And our alleged betters, they're laughing at you. We'll explain, but now let's head into the newsroom. Here is Mike Scott. Hey, me and Dan, good morning. Good morning, everyone. We have clouds, fog, and 42 at 631. The South is in shambles.